Hey guys and welcome to the Windows Phone 8 tutorials. Sorry that it's taken so long to get these videos up onto uh, YouTube. I've been having trouble actually capturing my screen because I've moved over to Windows 8 and my uh, capturing software has decided it doesn't want to work. Uh, but here I am now. The quality isn't as good as I'd like it to be but I'm going to have to uh, just make do with this video, try and sort some things out. I also want to get my microphone sorted because it's not very good. Um, Anyway, I try not to make these tutorials too boring uh, and too serious because a lot of people can get bored when you're doing this kind of thing. I know from when I was learning that coding can be really boring at times, so I'm going to try and kind of keep it a little more casual and kind of mix up a little bit so it's not boring to uh, to follow. So what we're using here is we're using the Visual Studio 2012. Um, this is professional 2012 version. Uh, you need to make sure you've installed the Windows Phone 8 SDK. This is important, otherwise you can't actually build your applications um, in Visual Studio. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a new project here. You want to make sure that you've clicked on Windows Phone down the side and that you're on the Windows Phone app. Uh, down this list you can do um, all sorts of different types of the uh, the applications, like you can start with Pivot apps, um, but we'll go into that another time. First thing to do is uh, name your application. I'm going to call mine My Application 2 because I already have a normal one. Oh, and I have a 2. Okay. I'm going to call it my application 3. Um, what you need to do is make sure that you're operating, um, your Windows Phone OS is on uh, 8.0 because that's the platform we'll be developing on. And it's going to go ahead and create our project with some default um, <coughs> things in the designer. Now what it actually starts with in designer I don't really normally keep. They're, um, they're just a couple of text blocks and um, quite frankly I find them a little annoying. So the first thing I do is actually delete these uh, straight away and resize your grid. To the uh, to the edges of the phone. Another thing you'll notice is along the top we have the signal and the battery, the battery and the time. Sorry, uh, this doesn't have to be removed. But if you've got a background on your application, um, this bar will always be visible, and that means if it if the user is using a dark theme or a light theme, there will either be a black bar or a white bar. Now that does actually kind of ruin the look of your app sometimes, especially if you're trying to give that full view. Um, you know, you want the the whole of the the screen. To, um, to use your application or your game, whatever you decide to do. So what you can do is uh, you can actually just remove the system tray by looking in the code here on the right. On the right hand side here, this is kind of the code that corresponds to the designer. So you can hand write things in here like the tools, but it's not worth it. You might as well just drag and drop the tools in. So where it says system tray is visible, uh, it says true. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change that to false. Um, if you notice now on our application, if you click on it, you can see the grid is now all the way around the phone. Uh, we now basically have the application full on the screen with no system tray uh, to come over the top of our application. So what we do in this kind of point now is we just have a little look around Visual Studio. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, we have the uh, properties area. This is when we drag a tool in. Um, when you bring in something, say a list box or a text block or anything like that, a button, um, we have to name it and we can change it a few little things here in the properties. Um, down the bottom we have the uh, the error output kind of thing. It, uh, sorry to say kind of thing, it's something I get stuck with now. Um, bad habit. But here is where the uh, if your application fails to run it will tell you what's wrong and you can double click on the any errors that are there and it will take you to them in the application and you can kind of see exactly what's going on. It, it tries to help you out. It doesn't always work. You sometimes have to hit Google but you know it, it does try. It does stop your application from running though if they're red. Uh, on the left hand side here I have the toolbox. If you can't see this in yours, what you need to do is uh, on the left hand side here you can see these two. Normally there's another one that says toolbox. I've actually already brought mine out. You just have to click on it and then go ahead and pin it. Uh, that's what I've done down the side here so that I can always see my tools that I need. Um, and obviously last thing is we have the emulator. Um, this is what we'll be running when we've um, added a couple of things to the application so that we can see it on an emulated mobile on the screen. So first thing, we're going to grab a, uh, a text box right now and drag that onto the screen. Now that's automatically brought it in, we can just resize it, um, we can move it around, we do what we want with it. But the first thing you should really do is start thinking of naming conventions. You really need to name your things um, constructively, otherwise you just kind of lose track of what you've got. And when you get complicated in some of your developments, you, if you've got lots of text boxes on the screen, you need to have them named correctly to know which ones you're trying to use in your coding. So what we'll do here is we'll go to the name and we'll just change that to my text box. Now we know that this box here is called my text box and we can call that in the code when we need to use it. 
um, then we have some we have some common uh, some common properties here that we can mess around with the text at the moment it says text box what we can do is if we just highlight that and remove it and just add um, hello world I know you know everyone likes to see hello world in, in every sort of tutorial there we go we now have hello world in our um, our text box here now what we can do if we want to actually get our application run is we just literally go up to the top to the emulator and we click on this now I've already opened mine up so it should load a little quicker um, it just saves time a bit so when we uh, get this to actually you'll see down here what's going on it normally says it's deploying and stuff and you know it just pops up here so now we have our application that we just designed in the designer and if we go ahead and stop that and just quickly I don't know, move it down the bottom and run it again we'll see that when the emulator comes back up it rebuilds the application and deploys it again to the device and now you can see our text box down the bottom it automatically does the things like the whole keyboard functions and stuff like that but it doesn't automatically add things like the um, the kind of um, spell checking when you're typing something predictive text sorry it doesn't always it doesn't set that up for you you have to uh, you have to tell it um, in the settings of the text box to do that so this was one of the first videos just to kind of get your head around the Visual Studio 2012 just to build your first Windows Phone 8 application um, that's all I'm going to do for this video there's some nice features which I'll be showing you when it comes to um, using buttons navigating through pages adding new pages um, I'll try to make it as interesting as I can and maybe um, as it gets more complicated I'll actually start to build an application that will keep adding to uh, each tutorial so uh, thanks for watching guys don't forget to subscribe the nay and uh, way out for my next video